morning guys and welcome back to my channel. I'm April with Great Hips Cakes and today is my kids 100th day of school. So because of their 100th day of school I asked them what they wanted to do and they wanted donuts. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to make some donuts this morning. So for this recipe you will need um, let's see here, two tablespoons of yeast. You will need a quarter cup of lukewarm water, um, a half a cup of sugar, two teaspoons or one teaspoon of salt, uh, two eggs, one third cup of vegetable shortening, five to seven cups of flour, and one and a half cups of whole milk. So first off, we are going to activate this yeast because we gotta get that done before we go any further. So I've got two tablespoons of yeast, active dry yeast, and I'm gonna pour it right down into my bowl quarter cup of lukewarm water and we're just going to give this a mix and we're going to let this sit here and activate for about five minutes to get it all good and go. If you're working with a stand-up mixer you're going to need a whisk attachment and a dough hook attachment. We're going to start off with the whisk attach attachment first and we're going to take our um, one and a half cups of milk and I've already warmed with this. It's like lukewarm. You don't want it cold because you don't want to kill your yeast once you've activated it with cold ingredients. So we've got our one and a half cups of whole milk, half a cup of sugar, and one teaspoon of salt. And I forgot to put my salt in there. One teaspoon of salt. And then you need to add your one third cup of vegetable shortening. and your two eggs. And then you're gonna give that a good whisk. Okay, so now with the whisk attachment still attached, um, our yeast is pretty much ready. We're gonna go ahead and throw our yeast in here. You wanna get all that you can, because this is what's gonna make them rise. Get that good whisk again. And I'm gonna go ahead and start with the whisk attachment still on. I'm gonna go ahead and start with um, just two cups of the flour. So, and this is all purpose. I'm gonna add one more cup to this with the whisk attachment still on. So we've got a total of three cups in here with the whisk attachment still on. We're going to take off the whisk attachment and we are going to get our dough attachment. And then we're going to go ahead and start adding the rest. So we've got three cups and we're going to use anywhere from six to seven or five to seven cups, just depending on what we need. We just want the dough to start pulling away from the sides and start forming a ball. So got three, this will be four. And we'll go ahead and add the fifth right here and then we'll see where we need to go from there. All right, so as you can tell, it's still very sticky. So let's keep adding. We'll add one cup at a time at this point because you don't want too much. All right, let's see. Let's see. Mm. It's still a little sticky. Yeah, it's still sticking to my fingers. So I'm not going to add a whole cup. Um, let me wash my hands. It's so close. I don't want to add a whole cup because it may be too much. So I'm just going to add maybe like a quarter of a cup of it at a time. So because you just want it to get to where it pulls away from the side of the bowl and it's not sticky anymore. <laughs> That's kind of what you're wrong. It's not sticking to my hands anymore. And it's pulling away from that dough hook. So from here, you can either knead it yourself or you can let the machine do it. I'm gonna let the machine do it. So you're wanting to mix it really good so the gluten gets in there and it gets really good and stretchy. 
So I'm gonna grab a piece and this is called the window pane test. And you're just gonna wanna stretch the dough. And if it's really stretchy to where it doesn't break when you're stretching it, then your dough is ready. If not, if when you pull it away, it starts to tear like that, it's not ready yet. So you're gonna put it back in here. You're gonna turn this thing back on. And you're gonna do it again. Try a piece again. My hands are already sticky. It's still wanting to break. So, I think what I'm gonna do, because I can usually get this dough ready a lot quicker, is I think I'm going to knead it a little bit myself because I like to do that. So, I'm gonna take it out. Put me some flour down in here. all that dough. I'm going to slide this up out of the way a little bit. All right, same thing like in my last video, if you watched it. I just made a mess. Oh my gosh, my black shirt is no longer black. Okay, so what you're going to do, just like with the cinnamon roll recipe that I did, if you have watched it, is I'm going to knead this dough and you're gonna fold it, push it out, fold it, push it out, just like so. All right, do it one more time, one more time. Yes. Stretching pretty good. Like I said, you can stretch it out without it tearing to part into pieces. That's when you know your dough is ready. A while ago when I was trying to pull it apart, it was ripping, it was tearing. So that's how you know your dough is ready. Take our dough out. You can tell now it's it's not sticking to my hands. It's it's perfect. All right. You just want to get it into a soft, smooth ball. I just like to kind of tuck everything under to make a really smooth, pretty ball. So what we're going to do is we're going to get a bowl and some cooking spray. We'll spray the bowl really good. And we're going to drop our dough right down in the bowl. And then we're going to set it in a warm spot and let it rise. We're gonna let this double in size, which would take about 25 to 30 minutes, um, depending on how warm it is. Um, and then after that, we'll roll these bad boys out and cut them out in the donuts. Stay tuned. All right, so we're back. And as you can tell, my dough has risen and it has definitely probably tripled in size. So it is definitely done. I think I have it in there for a little more than 30 minutes or so. so. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're going to take some flour and sprinkle our surface with some flour just to make sure that it does not stick. And then I'm gonna do the same with my rolling pin. And I'm going to, I do not have a donut cutter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this round um, this is actually the bottom piece to one of my ball pans that I have. So if you have a round cutter, you could probably use a cup, get creative, anything, just something around about donut size. And then I have my, one of my 
piping tips, my bigger piping tips, and I'm gonna cut out the holes in the mullet donuts. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn this out on the surface, and that is a lot of dough. A lot of dough. And I'm gonna give it another lid right here. All right, <clears throat> so with donuts, they are not like um, sugar cookies or anything like that. You do not want to have to like re-roll them. You can, and I have before, but the second roll, when you're trying to roll it back out, it just, the donuts taste a little harder, a little bit more tough, and they're just not as good. So you want to roll it about a half an inch thick, and you want to get as many donuts as you can out of that first roll because after that they're just not going to taste the same um but we're going to let these rise again once we get them cut out and so they're going to puff up really good so i'll start as much on the edge as i can and i'm just gonna cut as close as i can to each other We got 21 donuts, that's pretty good. <clears throat> then we're gonna take our um, piping tip or a smaller um, cutter, whatever you have. And I'm just gonna start cutting out the center of these donuts. And for the donut holes, I kinda like to, um, I like to cover them with cinnamon sugar. They're so good, I like that. And that's how I like to do that. Right, now, I have some pans behind me here. They're a line of parchment paper. And um, I like to, I don't want to mess with them a lot because you don't want to take the air out of them. That's what makes them good. But I'm just going to carefully pick up each one of these. And this is why I like to do this now because once they've risen and all the air is in them, you really don't want to mess with them at all. And so I like this trick right here. You'll put them on your parchment paper, line them up, kind of let them have room to rise between each one. And then what I like to do is right before I get ready to fry them or even before you get ready to proof them, you can cut this into little squares. You can literally dip the whole parchment paper square in the donut right into the oil and um, it releases itself. You can pull the paper right out, let the donut fry and you don't have to touch it. You don't have to worry about them um, getting flat because you've touched them and the, you know, let all the air out of them. So I like to put them on parchment paper. Um, and what I'm gonna do before I do that is I'm gonna go ahead and cut out as many donut holes as I can out of this because I really don't wanna re-roll it. So, and the only other thing that I did forget to do, cause we're making them for 100 days of school is I gotta make the one. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, is I'm going to cut here and here. We can make us some Long Johns. So, I'm gonna make a one like that. There you go. All right, and then we're gonna pick up the rest of these donuts here. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna recut. I'm gonna re-roll. Really not supposed to do this. They're not gonna be as good as the other ones, but we're gonna do it, okay? So it's a lot of dough. And we ain't gonna, we ain't trying to waste around here. We ain't even trying to waste. So, like I said, you can already feel how the dough gets a little bit more tough. You're not really supposed to, but I have not I will use this for donut holes. I'm just really just gonna cut some strips in this because we're gonna want some Long Johns. All right, now all the rest of this, I'm just gonna cut into some donut holes. So we have our three trays of donuts and our donut holes and our Long Johns. And um, so I'm gonna put some plastic wrap on all three pans and I'm gonna let these proof again for about another 20 minutes, 20 to 30 minutes. You just want them kind of puffed up looking really nice. So we're gonna get this done and while they're rising, I'm gonna go ahead and make the glaze. Um, 
and I'm gonna get the oil started because it'll take a few minutes for the oil to get heated up. So put plastic wrap on these and put them away. Okay, so as far as the oil, I like to use vegetable oil. Um, you can use canola or peanut oil, whichever one you prefer. Um, you just want something with um, that can withstand the heat. But you're gonna want it deep enough just so, and I may end up having to use the whole bottle. I don't remember having to do this before. But that's about good. Um, I'll try to show you. Um, so you can see about that much. You want it about that deep. You just want it to be able to float in there. Um, so that's how much I'm gonna put in there. And I actually like the wooden spoon. I will show you why. I like to flip mine and the wooden spoon helps. Um, so you might wanna have a wooden spoon handy or something that has an end like that. And then I'm going to put this on a medium high. So now that our oil is heating, our donuts are proofing, we're gonna start with our glazes. And I'm gonna do two different glazes. Um, first off, we're going to start off with um, our vanilla glaze, and that's what I usually do most of my donuts in. But I'm gonna make a chocolate for the kids too as well. So this is gonna start off with four cups of powdered sugar. And I don't really level this. All right, and then I'm gonna do about a half a teaspoon. And I make it a little over because I like more vanilla. About a half a teaspoon. Or a little more of vanilla. That may have been a whole teaspoon. And I do two teaspoons of corn syrup. And I'm about out of this. So, ooh. I'm going to do a quarter to a half a cup of uh, milk. So I'm going to start off with a quarter, kind of see what that looks like, and then we'll go from there. Looks like we are going to need a little bit more milk, so I'm going to do another quarter cup, so half cup total. A lot of times things that are sweet like this, like icing my buttercream, you can usually just take a little dash of salt to cut down on the sweetness just a little bit. Just a couple shakes. Here is our um, vanilla, our original vanilla glaze. And then now we're gonna work on some chocolate. And I don't use as much chocolate as I do vanilla, so it won't be four cups. So this time we're gonna use one, and right around a half. Like I said, I don't really, get too worried about being so specific about this. So, and then I'm gonna take four tablespoons of cup of and I'm two teaspoons of vanilla. One, there's two. And then I like to just give just a little squeeze of the um, corn syrup. And Here, you just want just a few tablespoons of milk. One, two. And you might need to add more of that here in a second as well. Ready to go. And our oil is almost done. It's at around 350, so it's done. It's ready to go. And it may actually be a little too hot because like I said, my oven on my stove top, it gets very hot. We can play here. So I'm gonna clean this up and then we're gonna get the donuts and we'll start frying. Okay, so we are about ready. Here's our donuts. They are proofed. You can see how they're puffy. 
Um, and then now's the time that I'm going to go ahead and I kind of put these a little too close together. So this is gonna be a little tough. So I'm gonna get my scissors and I'm gonna go ahead and try to just give them a cut. Try not to disturb them because you definitely don't want to flatten them out. So I'm just gently cutting along the lines of these donuts. Unless you have a gas stove, you might not have this problem. But I really have to watch that temperature constantly or these things will burn because they cook literally in seconds. Like this is the hard part. The cooking is like this. So I've got these separated. They're on their own piece of parchment paper. I've got my glaze ready and I like to glaze mine when they're still warm. So this is gonna be a little back and forth. But what I'm doing, this is kind of what I use. I use a roasting pan to drip and um, like a, this is actually like a pizza pan. So anyway, this is what I use. Okay, so I've got my drip pan, I've got my oil, it's ready to go, it's at the right temperature, and I've got my donuts over here. I've got my wooden stick, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of my donuts right here, and I'm just going to try to flip it over inside the oil. And my oil has cooled down just a tad, I'm going to tie it up just a little bit. I've got my spatula. And you're just gonna let it do its thing right there, hang out. And you'll start seeing it on the inside of the hole right here. You'll start seeing where it's starting to brown and that's when you'll know to kinda, you need to turn it. And I think it's about time. So we're gonna flip this bad boy over, just like that. So you're gonna flip it over. And it's only gonna take a second after I think it's done. So there's the first donut. We're gonna let the excess oil kind of drip off. And then I'm gonna bring them over to my warm pan. Set them down like so. And we have more to go. So let's continue. first pan that we had of donuts, we have them ready. So for the kids, for their 100th day of school, we're gonna do those chocolate covered. So, got my chocolate glaze mixed here. It's ready to go. So I'm going to see here, let me kind of look portion. So here's for their hundred. So we're going to take one. We're going to dip it in here and we're only going to do the tops of these. So we're going to dip it in. We'll move it around to get all them droplets to stop just like that. And then we'll redip it again here in a second. Same thing for this. for their 100th day of school. That's how we're celebrating it today, but we still have a lot of donuts left to do. So we're gonna finish glazing these. Um, these are the ones I glazed already, and we're gonna get to glazing these. So what we do is we take it in the hand like this, and I like to put a dip it in there, flip it over, the excess runoff. These things are good. I don't ever claim that these are Krispy Kreme like they're not. Krispy Kreme has a secret like none other. But these are amazing. I'm gonna take like 
maybe a quarter, I don't really even measure it out, maybe a quarter cup to a half a cup of um, regular white granulated sugar. And I'll add, I don't know, I just shake it until, and then keep mixing it until I think it looks good. You just want to be able to see the cinnamon in it. And then I take my warm donut holes and I will just put them all in here, put as many as I can in here. And I'll get my spatula, really get these good and coated. All right, and there's all the donut holes right there. So they're super, super good. The last thing I'm gonna show you is, um, so I'm more of the original glaze. My kids like the chocolate glaze with the sprinkles. My husband likes these little things right here. These are like mini long johns. This is my daughter calls them short johns. <laughs> so here's one that has not been done yet. And what I like to do is I'll take my buttercream icing and use whatever recipe you want to. Um, it's just a buttercream. Take my long john here. I'll take like a skewer and I just go from one end and all the way through to the other like that. And I just kind of wiggle it around. You don't want to tear it, but you just want to make it a little bit bigger. And I'll take my bag with my tip in it. And I'll stick it down there as far as I can and I will just fill it with icing in both sides. Just put it down as probably the length of my tip on both sides. And then I come over here with my chocolate glaze, give it a good stir. It's been sitting a few minutes. I just take it, just dip the one side. Mm, just like that. And give it a double dip. Yummy. Put them off to dry. And then. All right, guys, well, that is it. I have made just about all of my donuts. Those are 100 days of school. So, the kids are gonna love this. They're gonna eat them like crazy. So, these are all the different things that you can do with this um, recipe. You got several different varieties. It is so good. And you will have to definitely let me know if you try this recipe out. Let me know how you like it. Um, if you like this video, like and subscribe to my page. And who knows what we'll come up with next week. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day.